Okay, let's talk about ambient occlusion here in Cinema 4D. Now, this is something that I use almost daily whenever I'm working here in Cinema 4D. Ambient occlusion determines the degree to which each visible surface point is exposed and darkens it accordingly. Imagine a scene without a floor that is evenly lit, uh, the sun surrounding it. For each visible area, ambient occlusion will determine the degree to which it sees the sky. More precisely, the degree to which each visible point within a hemisphere with adjustable radius has an unobstructed view of the sky. Corner areas, holes, ridges, etc., or objects lying close to one another will see less sky and will be darker by default. Okay, so let's see what all that means. First of all, you've got to enable ambient occlusion by going to the render settings effect, turning on ambient occlusion. Now let's go ahead and just throw a floor into the scene and let's turn that off first. And let's go ahead and put a cube in the scene and pull that up. And if we render now, well, we get nothing. Let's go ahead and turn the ambient occlusion on. Render again. And you can see that we're getting these shadows here immediately that make this a little bit more realistic. And the shadows are occurring where surfaces are close to one another. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the parameters that we have with ambient occlusion. So I'll just click on here, and we'll just go right here. So the minimum ray length determines how the gradient that's defined here in the color will be rendered between the exposed and non-exposed areas. So the closer that the minimum ray length is to the maximum ray length, the further the gradient will be pushed towards the edges, which are defined by the maximum ray length. You really shouldn't mess with this. You should just leave this at the default of zero. Now, the maximum ray length, this value defines to which distance the surfaces see each other. If a low value is used, it'll be harder for these areas to see one another from the edges of the cube to the place where the floor starts. So let's just see what that means if we take that down to, say, zero. Let's go ahead and do a render here. Okay, so you get nothing here. Pull that back up. And let's take that to 50. Do another render. Okay, so you start to get this shadowing. Let's take that to 200. Click render. Okay, and it's darkening up a little bit. So basically, when higher values are used, a much larger distance will be included within the objects to be able to see each other. So if we take this and we pull this up a little bit, you can still see that they're able to see one another because we have a higher value of 200 here. If we take this back down to, let's say, 50, and click on Render again, they're still seeing one another, but not as easily, and therefore it's not darkening this as much. And let's go ahead and put that back down. Okay, so the accuracy, minimum samples and maximum samples settings are all responsible for the AO quality or the ambient occlusion quality. Low quality is accompanied by grainy results. And that's not necessarily bad. You may want grainy results at some point for aesthetic value. But if you want higher quality results, the accuracy along with the maximum samples is going to be your best way to achieve that. So right now we have 50% accuracy and we have the maximum sample set to 64. Let's set these down to 16 and let's set the accuracy down to 10. Now let's go over here and take a look at this again. We'll just render this to the picture viewer. And you can see, or I don't know if you can see in here, but we've got a lot of grain right here in this area. And that's because we have those settings set low. Actually, let's go ahead and put a sky in here. Do this again. Maybe if we put a light in the scene. We'll just zoom out a little bit here. See if we can see this a little bit better. Maybe pull this out. Go ahead and do a render now. Okay, so now you can see this a little bit better. You can see the grain here. Now let's go over here, go back to our settings, 
and let's turn the accuracy up to 100 and the maximum samples up to 256. Now with those two changes, we should have some very nice results here. And we do. The grain is gone. We still have our ambient occlusion. If you look at these, you can see the grain there, and it's gone there. The other thing that we have here is the contrast. So if you're not getting enough of the shadowing for your liking, you can always turn the contrast up. So let's turn that up to 10% and then do another render. And you can see how that's getting darker here. Okay, so that's a quick look at ambient occlusion here in Cinema 4D.